Hey guys, over the years we've touched on this subject a few times because it continually comes up. You would not believe over the last 12 years or so how many emails that we've received from people about this exact topic. Um, the latest one was today, this morning. One of our PayPal supporters sent quite a long email uh, explaining his situation, which is a really, really terrible one. Um, he's an American guy married to a Japanese lady and he's got two kids. And at the moment, the Japanese wife isn't talking to him and the Japanese wife is encouraging his two kids not to talk to him as well. And you would not believe how many times we've had emails with the same story over and over again over the years. It's sad. What happens is people see our videos about these sort of topics and then, you know, they, they know it's somebody who'll understand, so they send an email. So we're hearing it all the time and it's just, it, it's terrible. So this video is just sort of a, a heads up. Different people have said over the years that, that these videos have helped because maybe there is or there is or isn't something that they can actually do as a result of watching this video, but at least they're aware of the fact that, that what they're experiencing is common and normal. So just want to start too by saying, of course, as with all videos like this, they're generalizations and there are exceptions, of course. Um, of course, not everybody's exactly the same, but what's being described in these videos is really, really common. So typically what happens is, non-Japanese guys, now we're just, in this case, we're talking about non-Japanese guys and Japanese ladies, okay? That just happens to be the case. Or Japanese guys and Japanese ladies, as you'll see shortly. But, but typically what happens is, um, dudes meet, meet a Japanese lady uh, who is very sweet and nice and lovely Japanese lady, right? Classic. Classic, sweet, nice Japanese lady and they have some sort of romance and some sort of dating thing and then they get engaged and they get married. And then things change, right? Um, it seems that, and as you can see with the title of the video, I'm not calling Japanese ladies demons. Japanese people are calling Japanese ladies demons. And we've mentioned this in previous videos too. Quite often when you're talking to a Japanese dude and he refers to his wife, He'll put his two fingers up on top of his head. And same with Japanese kids. When you talk about their parents, sometimes you say, how's your mother or what's happening? Or they're telling you a story that involves their mother. And they'll put their two fingers up on their head. And it's the, it's the, the demon. Oni, they say. Oni. And it means demon. So when you see a, a Japanese person is talking to you and they put their two fingers up on their head, it means the person they're talking about is a demon and they do it all the time. And it's sort of like, it's sort of like a running joke. Everybody seems to do it. Everybody seems to do it and everybody seems to think it's normal. And so the husbands do it when they're talking about their wives and the kids do it when they're talking about their mothers. And interestingly, that doesn't upset those, the mothers at all or the wives at all. They, they, it's sort of like, I was exchanging some emails with this guy today about this. It's sort of like, because they think it's normal. And I actually said, my wife, before we got married, one time I saw a glimpse of this before we got married. And I said something to her about it later when, it, when she was all calm. And she said, it's normal for Japanese wives to be angry, right? Which was really, really interesting comment. It's, in, it's normal for Japanese wives to be angry. And I said to her, well, maybe it is, but not if they want to be close to their husbands, right? Because it seems that they think it's normal. And, and all their role models thought it was normal. So in other words, these girls have grown up in a house where the mother was the same. The mother ruled the house. The mother was the boss. And if she wasn't happy, she'd yell and rant and rave at the husband or at the kids or both. Um, and, and that was normal. And that's just the mother doing her job, keeping everybody in line and making sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing, right? And so they think it's normal. So their mother did it, and their aunt did it, and their grandmother did it, and the lady next door did it, and all the, all the women in their lives that they knew did it. So they think it's normal. So when someone comes from a different culture, like our American friend has come from a different culture where that's not considered cool at all, um, and is faced with that, he's going, hey, well, this isn't cool. You shouldn't be doing that. Um, but as far as she's concerned, 
um, it's perfectly normal. And that's what he's up against. Interestingly too, it's not perfectly normal for the men to do it, right? The men in the households here, and again, all generalizations, but generally the men in the households here are passive. And while the, and the ones I'm thinking about as I'm saying this, if the, if the wife or the mother is ranting and raving, the husband usually is quiet, or usually he's not there. As we've talked about before, you know, they leave for work at 7.30 in the morning and then after work they go and have beer with their friends or go sit outside the convenience store in their car watching TV and eating junk food um, and avoiding going home as late as possible. You know, I actually asked a guy I know here, a dentist actually, I asked him recently, he has two daughters and I asked him if they, if they, they fight, the daughters and the, the wife fight, oh yeah, every day, he said. And I said, what do you do about that? He said, nothing, I, I stay away. He just stays away from it. And that's what they do. The men just stay out of it. That's the woman's thing. The wife's thing is for her to rant and rave and carry on, right? But it's not cool for dudes to do that, of course. So the dudes aren't allowed. And there's sort of like one set of rules for the woman of the house. She's pretty much the boss. And she can rant and rave and carry on as much as she wants. Um, but no one else can, right? It's only the mother that can do that. It's only the wife that can do that. And as a result... You get these really uh, distant relationships, as we've talked about before. You know, I, I, I know a few examples. That I, years ago, I made a video talking about this, and I, at that time, I knew one example of this. And it was when I walked into a house once to visit visit a family that we knew to drop something off. And, and I walked in, and it was just really the atmosphere was really different from what it normally was. And the kids were lying on the sofa, might have been playing video games or. And the husband was all sort of laid back and I said, what's going on here? It just felt really different, you know. And oh, the wife's gone to Osaka for the weekend, you know. Held up his fingers up on his head for the, for the Oni, the, the demon. The demon's gone to Osaka for the weekend. So pressure's off, right? The demon's not there. So hubby and the kids are all relaxed and happy, right? And since then, that guy's actually said that to me a couple of times over the years when I've, I've been talking to him and how things, oh good, the wife's in Osaka because she goes fairly regularly apparently and every time she goes to Osaka, everybody's relaxed and happy. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible? And there was another one recently, I had the same thing happened recently where another, another dude made a similar comment about the wife being away and everybody was relaxed and happy because the wife wasn't there and, and you, you can imagine, I mean there'd be ladies watching this who'd feel terrible if their husband or their kids talked to them, talked about them like that, referred to them like they were a demon, and they were happy that they weren't there, you know, they were relieved they weren't there, and the thought that their husband might hang out at the convenience store until nine o'clock at night so that he doesn't have to be there during all the dramas after dinner, you know, there'd be a lot of ladies watching this who'd be, who'd be, you know, horrified to think that's the way they were perceived by their family, but Japanese ladies think it's normal. That's just normal. That's just the wife being a good wife and the, the mother being a good mother and r ruling the house with an iron fist. That's the way they see it. She's just doing a good job, right? So, so it's, it's, it's terrible. It's really hard. And I do see glimpses of it. I do experience this firsthand myself sometimes. Um, it's terrible. And, and uh, so I can tell you what, 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 helps the situation and what makes it worse okay so it's really hard as you can imagine um, it's if someone's ranting and raving at you um, unnecessarily you know where from a lot of our cultures if we've got something to say you know if you're going to tell your kids to finish eating their dinner you just say come on finish your dinner right whereas you know an Amer a Japanese lady might rant and rave scream and carry on there's there's one in particular I'm thinking of the funny thing is they only do it to their kids and their husbands to everybody else they're like an angel they're all sweet and lovely and we've actually got one family friend who will actually speak to you and in his sweet lovely little Japanese lady voice and then turn to her kid and say sit properly with this horrible voice and then turn back to you and use her sweet sweet lovely voice again and it puts shivers up your spine it's horrible it's absolutely horrible, and she she'll do that. She does that regularly. Horrible, you know. And it's only because we go to her house that we actually get to see that. Usually outside the house, she that would be all very sort of quiet. Usually you don't see it. Occasionally in a park or something, you might see a mother going off at her kids. Occasionally, 
but usually in public, see, they don't want to make waves, so usually this sort of tyrant demon behavior is usually sort of kept fairly sort of uh, discreet, so that other people aren't, aren't uh, what's that word, aren't exposed to it, you know? So, uh, so yeah, first, from first-hand experience, I can tell you a couple of things that, that will, will make it worse and a couple of things that might make it better. Um, first thing is, it is hard when someone's being unreasonably and unfairly and un, un, uncivilizedly um, ranting at you for something, and because they do it to the husbands too. Rant at the husbands for whatever they haven't done or um, sometimes I get ranted at sometimes for, for what the kids have or haven't done. And um, it's hard sometimes, particularly if the timing's bad. You know, come home late at night, haven't had dinner yet, you're hungry. You know, or get up in the morning and you're still waking up, haven't had your morning coffee yet, and suddenly you get this tyrant ranting at you. Um, it is hard not to snap back and, and be aggressive back and say, hey, you know, back off. Um, but if, if you do react... Uh, angrily to it, uh, it won't go well because, again, it's a cultural thing. These, all those examples I told you before about what these ladies have experienced with their own mothers and their aunts and 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 all the other women in their lives, the husbands in that scenario have always been passive and taken it. Usually, in most cases, there's a festival going on ahead of us there. Detour. So. So, as far as they're concerned, the way a husband or a, or a father deals with the ranting wife is that he just quietly, passively accepts it, right? And that's, that's what they expect. They expect that the husband is just going to let them rant and rave and carry on and not react to it at all. Not react to it at all. Just go, okay, and be supportive and cool and, and not react to it at all. Because there's that double rule thing where they think it's okay for the wife to be angry and rant and rave, but it's not okay for the husband to. So if the husband reacts negative to it, oh, Jesus, stop, you know, <laughs> give it a break, um, that'll make them worse because they, they think that's not the right way for a husband to react. And all the, so all these examples I've got in my head of these ranting, ranting wives and mothers, um, in each case, the husbands are really passive. The husbands are really passive and they just take it. And they just let, because see, they've, the Japanese guys, They've grown up with those role models too. So in their household, their mother ranted and their father quietly, passively took it. Or he went and hid in the backyard or he went and hid at the convenience store or he went to work. Usually, usually in most cases, for most of these rants and raves, the husbands aren't there because they go and hide at work or they go hide after work somewhere else. And so, so the Japanese husbands and fathers their life experience has been that this is all normal. The wife rants like a crazy, crazy person and the husbands just passively take it and, and don't react to it. So, if you get uh, an American guy or an Australian guy come wandering along um, and in the same situation and gets ranted at and bitched at and says, hey, you know, back off, uh, it makes it worse. Okay. And it's really, really hard because in, in the societies that a lot of us have come from, that sort of behaviour is unreasonable and it's uh, immature and it's selfish and it's childish and it's all those other negative things. It's not a positive thing, is it? If the kid hasn't eaten their breakfast, ranting and raving like a crazy person is not the solution. You know? Um, it's irrational. Uh, again, it often comes to my mind... Um, I've spoken with my mother about this over the years and, and she's often said different situations we've, we've talked about different parts of Japanese culture and she often says, ah, it reminds me of Australia in the 50s and you can imagine there'd be a lot of things like this, you know, modern relationship, uh, understanding of modern relationships and, and, and equality, equality in the household and, and, and reasonable discussion about things and all those other things that are quite common now outside Japan, in Japan it's still unheard of. And again, the woman thinks she's the boss. In Japan, bosses in companies still rant at staff and teachers at school still rant at students angrily. You know, angry teachers and angry bosses. I mean, in most of our cultures now, we accept that, that, that anger is not the solution, that anger is not helpful in any circumstance, you know, for a parent or a husband or wife or, or um, child or 
teacher or boss um, ranting, um, angry, being angry is unprofessional and unhelpful, isn't it? We, we accept that, that strict is sometimes important, but anger is never helpful, you know? And that's sort of considered to be a, a obvious thing now that we all accept as being an obvious thing. Um, however, in Japan, they still haven't quite got the idea about that yet. So, so what's not helpful, um, if you find yourself with a 45 kilogram Japanese lady ranting and raving and screaming and carrying on is to react to that in an angry way or a frustrated way as hard as it is I mean it's just for, for a lot of us it, it gets to a point you know particularly as I mentioned if the timing's off you know you haven't had dinner yet you're hungry you're tired or it's first thing in the morning you've been awake for two minutes and you're subjected to this it's hard not to react to it negatively but if you react to it negatively it will be extremely unhelpful um, so the, the only things you can do is to um, be as calm as possible and it's really hard, it is really hard, be as calm as possible and remember that she thinks what she's doing is normal. She thinks that behavior is normal. Um, and just listen to what she's saying and then, and then quietly and gently try and help as much as you can. So for an example, kids haven't eaten their breakfast, she's ranting about that. So, hey, what's happening? What's happening? Oh, you know that? You haven't eaten their breakfast. Oh, 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 okay. Hey, kids, listen. Listen to your mother and eat your breakfast. Go on. And chances are she'll keep ranting for a while longer because that's what they do. That's what they do. And you just have to be cool and just just, just accept it and just, just you know, support, support whatever it is that she's going on about in a calm and rational way. The other thing is to keep this in mind that kids, our, our American friend, you know, his situation is terrible because he's got his kids and everything. But often for the kids, it's not quite as upsetting for them as it, as it might be elsewhere because for them, they think it's normal too. Because, you know, their mother's always ranted, their grandmother rants, um, the neighbor's mother rants, their friend from school mother, mother rants. And so that they think the same thing, that a ranting, screaming mother is a normal thing, right? So it's not quite as upsetting for them as it could be for, for, for you know, kids in another country, maybe. Maybe. And I mean, it all depends. There's obviously variations to this. And it's the same as with the anger and the ranting. It's a sliding scale. I mean, we know some that are just totally off the wall. Um, and we know some that are quite reasonable. In fairness, I, I try not to talk too much about my own family. But in fairness to my wife, she can be pretty reasonable. And when she's not ranting and raving, when she's in the right frame of mind, and this would be my suggestion as well when all that's going down obviously it's not the try and, time to try and discuss it it's best just to be supportive and be as calm as possible during that time then when the timing's right Japanese people are all about timing and they have a good point about this too is, is when you when you raise topics and when you talk about different things and the best thing you can do is to wait till there's a, a, a quiet time where everybody's relaxed and happy and probably the kids aren't there and you're just having a bit of a quiet time and and something comes up or something's sort of the the, the topic comes up and you get an opportunity to sort of say you know that that outside Japan now <laughs> we considered that the the ranting and the being angry um, doesn't help that being strict is good but being being angry doesn't help um, you can try, you know, and in fairness to my my wife, I think she has, we have talked about this before, during calm, quiet times, and she does sort of get it. She does sort of understand, and she knows it upsets her too. That's the problem, is that when they're doing that, they, do, they get quite upset, and it upsets everybody else, and it doesn't go for a healthy house, a happy house, you know. And she sort of does get it. She does sort of get it, and she's trying not to do it. But it's really hard. It's the same with our natural reactions to things. You know, when you've grown up in another country, when we've grown up in whatever country we've grown up in, our natural reaction to things, and I mean, foreigners living in Japan know this, we have our natural reaction to things often is not the best reaction in Japan. And that we often have to control our natural reaction and, and just, uh, you know, have a Japanese reaction to something where we, we might want to say what we really think, but we're in Japan, so we can't. And it's really hard, no matter how much intellectually you understand uh, what the right or wrong thing is to do, when it comes to actually doing it, it can be really difficult, and it's the same for them. You know, she might understand, you might be able to get the idea across that outside Japan now, 
you know, being angry at people, you know, is considered to be not helpful and not healthy. Um, and she, intellectually, she might understand it, but when it comes to the actual situation, you know, her natural reaction, her, her default setting is probably still going to be the same. So in our case, I think she probably, my wife probably rants less than she used to, you know, and she's pretty good. She has, she's got better and I've probably got a little bit better at dealing with it as well and accepting it and sort of being helpful. Um, but it'll probably never go away, you know, it'll never stop. And it's just one of the things, this is another one of the things on the list of reasons why marriages between non-Japanese people and Japanese people usually fail, the majority of them fail. This, this is another one of the reasons. You know, if you get, if you're a, a foreign dude and you marry a Japanese lady, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna experience this, you know? And if you can't hack it, well, you know? And I'm, I've heard so many tragic stories over the years. It's, it's, it's sad to hear them and it, it's, it's not surprising. You know, you, you hear them again and again and again. Yeah, there it is again, same story again. You know, um, quite often you can predict it. Interestingly, one of my friends, one of my, one of my friends in Australia actually has a friend who married a Japanese lady about uh, 10 years ago. And at, when he told me the, the whole story, I said to him, oh, it's not gonna work. It's not going to work, you know. And recently, I heard that it didn't work. And it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's usually the case. And and sadly, to our friend who sent the email this morning, I'm really sorry, man, about the situation you're in, you know, because it's it's really common. It's really really common, you know. And and I mean, relationships between any two people anywhere in the world is is always difficult, isn't it? But when you get two different cultures and two cultures as different as America and Japan or Australia and Japan or pretty well any country in Japan. There's, there's not really anywhere that has a culture that's similar to Japanese culture. So if you're not Japanese and you're in a, Jap a relationship with a Japanese person, it's gonna be difficult, you know? So anyway, hopefully at least that's a heads up for someone to help somebody in some small way. <laughs> if, if, if not only as a deterrent <laughs> to anyone who's met some sweet Japanese lady that they're thinking about marrying, just be aware that her idea of what a, a girlfriend is, is probably very, very different from her idea of what a wife is. That's a key point. Anyway, <clears throat> sorry guys, there's more than enough of that. More videos, coming soon.